Hey guys, I'm Sarah. This is Kim with Drifter Vans, and that's Garrett in the back installing my Starlink. We are here in my van, and today we're going to be testing out the functionality of my EcoFlow Power Kit. You ready? <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So the last time I was in Michigan at Drifter Vans, we installed my EcoFlow Power Kit, which was super easy and the setup is even easier. Today I'm going to have Kim show you guys how to set up the control panel and we're also going to be testing out a bunch of appliances in my van to show you how long they can run for. My battery bank is 10 kilowatt hours which is equivalent to about a thousand amp hours which is a huge upgrade from my Airstream which was 200 amp hours. I've been living in my van for one week now and my mind is blown at how user-friendly and capable this system is. I have a 12 volt AC and this system allows me to run it for over 24 hours with no charging, completely off grid. It is an absolute dream and I can't wait to show you guys. Let's hand it over to Kim and we'll talk about some more technical factors. So when we finish the install of an EcoFlow system, the actual setup of the system is very easy for us. And so the first thing is allowing us to set the discharge level of the lithium battery. It's very bad to deplete completely a lithium battery. With the system with EcoFlow, it is possible to set up uh, a certain uh, percentage, let's say 8% here, which means that when the batteries are gonna reach 8%, they're gonna shut off to avoid reaching 0%. The second plus is in the input settings, you can decide if the alternator is gonna charge the batteries when you're on idle or not you don't always want the van to charge when the van is idling. So I noticed that all of the circuits are labeled. How do you set that up? So EcoFlow allows you to uh, label and name every circuit, whether it's AC or DC. So I can show you here, it's under the output. This is the AC power. You can actually label the, um, all the circuits, so the passenger uh, outlets, the microwave, the outdoor outlets. So you can, you know exactly how much you're drawing from each individual circuit. You can do the same thing from the DC. So the DC is the 12 volt. Uh, here, for example, you can specifically label the fridge, the water pump, the shower fan, the gray water pads, the heating light. The other great thing that you can do with EcoFlow is that not only you label the circuit, but you can individually shut them off. So for example, let's say that uh, all the DC circuits are on, but it's the summer, so you absolutely don't need to draw any power from the heating pads for the gray water tank. You can specifically shut off this circuit of the DC power. And that works for DC and AC? Uh, no, you can shut off the DC circuit individually. The AC circuit, you can look at them, but you cannot shut them off individually. That's probably something that's gonna come up in a future update of the EcoFlow system. So when we filmed the installation video, we told you guys that you would be able to turn your water heater on and off from this system. Unfortunately, we were mistaken. It turns out you cannot turn individual circuits on and off when it comes to AC. So Drifter Vans installed a switch for my water heater. That way, every time I turn on my inverter, it's not kicking on the water heater and drawing a bunch of watts, and my battery will last a lot longer. This is something that they are going to be implementing into all of their future builds as well. Okay, so now that you've shown us how to set it up, can you give us a brief overview of how to use the system? Yeah, so the system is very easy to use. So on the left, you have the battery state. So basically, it tells you how much power you have left in your batteries. If your batteries are charging, then it will tell you how much time you have left to reach 100%. And if your batteries are being drawn, it will tell you how much time you have left if you keep using that amount of power. On the right side, you have two different uh, boxes, the input and the output. So the input is basically everything that you're using to recharge your battery. So there are your solar panels, uh, the shore power connection, and the alternator charge. So if you click on it, it actually tells you exactly how much you're getting from every source of power. 
The other section uh, under it is the output. The output is everything that is drawing on your battery. So if you click on it, you can specifically see what circuit is drawing power. To understand how it works, basically, if the input is higher than the output, then your batteries are gonna be charging. If the output is higher than your input, then your batteries are gonna be drained. So when I go to charge my batteries with shore power, is there anything I need to change on the panel? Yes, when you connect your van to shore power, you need to change the settings depending on what kind of outlets you're using, whether it's 15 amp or 30 amp. So you go into the input, you go into the settings, and AC input current. So here it allows you to change between 30 amp and 50 amp depending on the kind of outlets that you're actually using to recharge your van. So if I were to charge my van with a regular 120 volt outlet, is there a certain type of cord I need to use? Yes, so if you're recharging your van and you need an extension cord, you need to use a 12 gauge wire. If you want to recharge your van uh, with a 30 amp outlet, then you need to use a 10 gauge wire. So the app has some really cool features too. You just connect it to your power kit. It's all Bluetooth. And then when you open it, it'll show you the same things that the control panel show you, like your available time, your input and your output. It shows you if you're charging and how many watts you have coming in. I love using this app for when I'm laying in bed and say I want to turn my lights off. I can just go to DC and turn the overhead lights off and then I don't even have to get out of bed. So that's super nice. And then I can also go and say right now my fan is running and I'm on the other side of the van. I don't feel like walking over here or using the remote. This is a terrible example, but I can turn my fan off, which we should have had off the whole video. Sorry if it was loud. I can turn on my inverter if I need to charge my laptop or use the AC outlets and use my microwave. <laughs> I think my favorite part of this system, both on the control panel and on the app, is that it shows me my available time left. So I don't have to do a test and wait 24 hours to see how long it takes my batteries to die. I can actually turn on the appliances that I need to use and see how long I can be off grid. The only other thing the app is super useful for is if you get an error code on the control panel, you can look on here. It will tell you exactly what's wrong and typically you just need to update it and this is how you do it, is through the app. Tomorrow I'm gonna pull the van into some sunlight, get some solar going, and then we're gonna test some appliances and see how long I can run off-grid on a sunny day. We'll see how the weather is. breakfast fresh coffee and bagels too a new day is waiting for us we got lots of fun stuff to do hey how are you doing so today i'm getting between 150 and 250 watts of solar and my battery is at about 65 percent it's definitely enough solar to sustain my batteries but instead we're going to test out the smart generator and see how long it takes to recharge my batteries to 100 percent did you already fill it with gas? Yes, gas and oil. These guys don't forget to put oil in the generator. <laughs> how, do you, how do you say it? Oil? <laughs> oil? Oil? Yeah, oil. Oil. <laughs> can you show me how you put the gas and the oil in there? So the gas, I, uh, I can show you, it's simply here. The oil, I can because I do not have a flat screwdriver. You need to remove the spalmo and uh, you have a little funnel that you can use to put some oil. Alright, so show me how it's done. So step one is to turn it on. So you put the generator on, on the fuel on, on to uh, allow some air to go inside. And you can either use the electric start or if you want to use your muscles, you can just start it. So currently the battery is at 66% and is getting around 2 kilowatt of input. So it's getting 250 watt from the solar panels and 1.7 kilowatt from the generator. 
From there, you have around an hour and a half for the batteries to recharge to 100%. If you have one battery, it would actually take 45 minutes to recharge your system from now. Is there a way to set up the generator to start automatically? Yes, right now we just turned on the generator and connected it to shore power. You can actually connect it directly to the power hub and you can set up the automatic start of the generator. So the generator will automatically start when your batteries reach a certain level. So for this, you need to go into the system, smart generator on and off, and you can decide at what uh, level of batteries the smart generator is gonna start and when you want it to stop recharging your batteries. So we will check back in an hour and a half once my batteries are fully charged and then we will test out all of my appliances and see how long they can run with a full battery. All right, so for this experiment, I am first going to test out all of the appliances that are built into the van, like the Max Air fan, the air conditioner, the dome fan in my shower ceiling, and the microwave. I do have a few DC appliances that stay on most of the time, like my cell signal booster, my toilet vent, the overhead lights are on most of the time, my security camera, and I feel like there's one more, my water gauges. Altogether, these appliances are drawing about 50 watts and my panel says that I have five days of available time. So let's see how long I can run these other appliances with no input and a fully charged battery. Sarah reviewed the time for every appliance uh, in the van. Just remember that the hotter it is outside, the more the AC is going to draw. So the available time does depend on how many things you're running at once. It really just depends on your power needs. So far, I'm really impressed with the system. It's super user friendly. It's extremely capable. Drifter Vans does install these. They also sell them and help with the installation of them in any RV. So make sure you let us know if you have any questions and reach out to Kim if you're interested in a power kit. <laughs> All right, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Don't put a dent in my roof. <laughs>